Welcome fellow coders. Today we're diving deep into the world of logging in Go. We'll unravel the mysteries of FMT prints, log package, and discuss the common pitfalls developers face. Then, brace yourselves for a groundbreaking approach to logging, tailored to elevate your Go code to new heights. Let's start with the basics. Go provides the FMT and log packages for basic logging, but they come with their limitations. FMT.println is great for simple messages but lacks the sophistication needed for structured logs. Log.println, while slightly better, still doesn't offer the control we crave in large-scale applications. What do we not get from these methods? These approaches lack structure, leading to messy and hard-to-read logs. Developers often fall into traps such as excessive logging, which can lead to performance issues and log file bloat or they might not categorize log levels appropriately, leading to a flood of unimportant messages in critical logs. Let's see how these prints work. We will print a message using FMT print LN. Run the program. It simply puts out the message without any other information. Now, we shall try log print. And here, we can see it prints the date and time. The log package provides more features like we can set the flags to get more information from the logs. Let's try a few flags. We set it with set flags method. L date puts the date time. L microseconds prints the time in microseconds. This might be useful in rare scenarios. And L long file prints the file path. We add another print after setting the flags. Let's try these out. Here we can see how it prints the information we asked for. This prints the full path of the file. Let's change this flag to short file. This prints the relative path. Let's see it running. And here it shows the file. This looks much better. Let's try the panic method. This halts the normal execution of a program when an unexpected error occurs. Here, it exits the program. This is similar to raising an error. These errors can be handled. Well, there is another way to completely halt the program. It is the function fatal. We can see here the program stops with exit code 1. Now let's implement our custom logger. I like to keep it in a separate package. So let's create a new folder, logger. Now create a new file, logger.go. Package would be logger. To implement this logger, we will need logging levels and a method to set log level and methods to log at different levels. Now create a few constants for logging levels. We will have three levels, info, warning and error. Next we create our logger structure. 
It contains the logging level and three kinds of logger in it. Info logger, warning logger, and error logger. We keep them separate so that we can set different settings or flags for these levels. Next, we declare a pointer to the logger structure. This will represent our logger instance. Now we will implement the init function. This function defines the logger pointer that we are going to use to print logs in the application. We do this in the init function so that we do not miss this definition and setting log levels in our application. Logger is a pointer to the logger struct. Let's set the level to info for this example. Now, we create info logger with log.new method. We want to print the logs on standard output. Prefix the logs with info text. And let's use the standard flags. Now similarly, create the other two loggers. Let's say you want to have a different set of flags for error logs. We will add the short file flag so that we know where the error is. This is why we kept different instances for different log levels. You might want to set the log level in your application to override the default value. So let's create a simple method that accepts level as an argument. Set the level in the logger instance. We still need methods to do logging. Let's implement these methods. Three methods are needed. Info, warning and error. These methods accept a string that will be printed with appropriate information on standard output. Let's implement the info function. We will print this log only if the logging level is less than or equal to info level. If we set the logging level to warning or error, there will be no logs from the info level. Now we use the info logger to print the message. Similarly, let's implement the other two methods. Let's put this custom logger to use. Go to the main function. We will add three different kinds of logs.
it prints three types of logs. In the error log, it prints the file as logger.go and it will always print that. This is a mistake and is of no use. Please ignore this for now. Let's try setting the logging level to warning. Now we add another set of logging of each type. This time the info log is missing, so our log levels work. In the realm of Go, logging is not just a task, it's an art. With our custom logger, you're not just writing code, you're orchestrating a symphony of logs. Embrace this approach and watch your Go applications flourish with clarity and precision. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and click that notification bell for more coding wizardry. Until next time, keep coding and keep logging smartly.